Hello and welcome to Kiev Sports. I'm Mumudu Gajaga and thank you for joining us. Coming up tonight, the Gambia Scorpions are on preparation for the Africa Cup of Nations Cameroon 2022. It was meant to be in 2021, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the tournament has been delayed. Joining me on the line is coach Tom Sanfied in Belgium. Um, currently, he has released his team list for the Toki friendly, um, where the Gambia are going to play in three international friendly matches, one with Niger on the 5th of June, against Togo three days later, and also Kosovo on the 11th of June. Uh, welcome to the show, Coach. Good evening, Modu. Hope you're doing fine. Yes, I'm very well. Um, you've just relieved the squad of players that are going to be part of this training camp. Um, tell us how you came up with this list. Yeah, we want to use this uh, training camps so far from AFCON. This is the first camp after qualification. We want to use this camp to, to, to see some new players. Uh, we know naturally the majority of the team who qualified us, the players who were with us for three years, we know their ins and outs, their qualities, everything. Um, and this camp we want to use uh, to see some new players. Uh, we never know what's going to happen in the next six months. Players can be injured, the COVID situation, uh, players can fall without club. Uh, different uh, reasons can happen that, and we need alternatives naturally for every position. And this camp is uh, going to be used for that. Naturally, we play three strong opponents, all better ranked on the FIFA ranking than us. So it will be a competitive camp and we have still the aim to get good results. So uh, first of all, to screen new players, to find other talent for the future. And secondly, uh, naturally also to get good results. You have some new inclusions in this team list. Uh, Ibrahim Odabo is one player who came in as a substitute against Manchester United in the Europa League semi-final. Um, getting him in this team and some other players that you've added, the likes of Dembo Odabo, Mohamed Badamosi, who has been in and out of the team, there's a Lamin Sar and some other players, and, and Bunsane. How important is their inclusion into the team? Yeah, uh, first of all, Ibrima Darbu is naturally the last uh, week's impressive performing for AS Roma. I think we all Gambians can be very proud of him, but he was already in the squad in, in uh, November last year when we had to meet Gabon, but then it was AS Roma who didn't let him travel because of COVID regulations. And also in uh, in March, he was in the squad for the Angola and the DRC matches. And then uh, he got uh, injured and, uh, and as Roma told us that he couldn't come. Um, uh, there are some new players. In total, there are nine players who were never selected before uh, or who were never at the team uh, in the camp. I think about Leon Guara, a left back who played in Holland in the top league, who played for, uh, before for the German national team. Um, we have Mohamed Sane, the brother from uh, Buba Sane, who is playing as right back in Manik Ostrava. James Gomez, former under-20 captain, uh, performing very well in Denmark. Omar Guy, left back. Uh, Ibrima Darbu, we mentioned him already. Adama Jarju playing well in, in, in Serbia. And Abu Bakari Kante, who plays in Spain, and uh, Dembu Darbu, who plays Shakhtar uh, Soligorsk in Belarus. So, a lot of young talent, a lot of players who never played for that country before. Uh, but I think it's a mix. We kept a few experienced players because you need them. Uh, but we want to, to use this chance to see these players who are performing well abroad. Uh, can they add something to the team? Uh, do they have a chance to, to be in the final selection for AFCON? Uh, we will judge about that and we will work in these uh, almost two weeks and these three friendlies to analyze and to get a better idea about them. But I'm very happy uh, that we have so much talent and we could include some new names. Just to conclude on the players that you've invited, well, there are some notable absentees, um, the likes of Babuka Trawale and Modu Baro. And as well as there is one particular player that everyone keep asking about, that's Ali So, who recently signed for a Turkish club, and now he's playing for a Russian club, rather, I beg your pardon, in Russia. Um, he's not in this squad again for the friendly. Um, tell us, are there any reasons? Yeah. yeah, let me first say that a few players are not in the squad who are regulars. 
uh, a few players we discussed and we asked them to focus on their club uh, football. Players who were long without the club uh, can now and found the clubs uh, the last weeks and last months. Uh, we have a few injuries, um, yeah, but Steve Travali is uh, seriously injured and he will be some uh, some weeks more out. He, he was not available. Noah Sonko Sundberg is, is recovering from an injury. He played this weekend, but is not fully fit to, to, to play or to come for the national team. He preferred to recover further at his club level. Uh, Modu Jarju and Modu Barrow are both having uh, light injuries, but not fully fit for the game. Plus, Modu Barrow is not released by his club uh, coming from Korea due to the COVID situation. Um, and further, uh, the players uh, in the last uh, three years, these are now in total 60 players I have selected for the national team. Uh, 26 are now selected. That means that 34 players are not selected who were previously selected. Ali So is one of them. He was previously selected four times and uh, he is now not part of it. But uh, many players are not part of the team. That's the problem as national team coach. Uh, you have a lot of uh, quality players. Uh, Gambia has so many players. I follow more than 130 players week in, week out, performing all over the world. Um, and many deserve to be in the selection, but you must make choices. And uh, yeah, this is the final 26. And I'm very happy with uh, the inclusion of uh, Dembu Darbu, uh, who is... Uh, who is uh, the best scoring Gambian player at this moment of time uh, in, 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 in Europe. He scored 10 goals in Soligorsk and last season he scored 16 goals. Uh, of, uh, from uh, June he scored 16 goals in uh, North uh, Macedonia, so 26 goals since September last year. Um, and I'm very happy with his inclusion because he is at the moment uh, the, the striker on fire. Um, and I think we have a good squad, but naturally we cannot select every player. But coach, just to clarify still, do you have any personal problems with Ali So? Um, is it because of his performance and his level uh, of football that is why he's not part of your, your national team selection? Yes, he's played under you pr previously, um, but now that he's been playing in a top league, prior to going to um, Russia, in the league he was playing, CSK Sofia, he's been scoring goals. He, he's their top striker. He's not been in your previous selection. Do you have any personal issues with him or any other pl player? I have, a, <laughs> it's a good question, but it's also funny in one way. I have no personal issue with any player. I judge players, first of all, uh, on their performance for the national team and if they fit in the strategy as a coach. Um, a striker, there are many strikers, but a certain type of striker can fit in a system and that's the way we judge players. And naturally, players get opportunities in the national team. Like I said, 60 players got already selected for the national team. Some got only one selected, twice, three times. Um, and if you don't bring uh, what what is expected, then probably there is no next time. Because... Uh, thank you very much, coach, and wish you all the best of luck in your three international friendlies with Niger, um, with Togo, and as well as Kosovo. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks. That was coach Tom Sanfiet, the coach of the Gambia national team, the Scorpions, who are preparing for the Africa Cup of Nations shortly. Well, all their three international friendly matches are going to be in Turkey, and that's next month in June, uh, June on the 5th, June on the 8th, and also on the 11th. We will take a short break and when we come back we have a Gambian who is playing in England for Bristol City in English Championship and we will talk to him.
Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is Q Sports and I'm Mumudu Kajaka. Joining me in the studio after having a loan spell with Newport County, a Gambian youngster, Seku Jane, had his first senior debut for English Championship Club, Bristol City, a month ago and he played against Sefer Wednesday. Um, Seku, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be there. How does it feel to have your first senior debut with your club? Bristol oh. City in the English it's, Championship. It's this dream come true. It's the, it's the best feeling that a young boy like me could have from Gambia. You're just 21 years old and you went to England some years ago. You're on your first time visit after a decade. Um, tell us about how is football in England. Football is great in England. Obviously, you know, it's the, England is the best country. They've got the best leagues, best teams in the world. Well, one of the best teams in the world, obviously. Oh yeah, football's great there. You as a youngster, you, you started off some loan spells, first in, in the academies of course, and then you play um, some school football as well. And you had this loan spell, it gives you much a little bit of experience, but coming to the championship, you have a lot of teams there, there's a lot of competition. So playing in that league, how does that make you feel? <sighs> that make me stronger going, going, for, going for those loans obviously it's a, it's a line point for me to like to be able to play in the championship obviously i'm um, playing with academies that's little boys like, like little playing with little that's like little playing with little boys but playing with men's that gets me stronger makes me ready for the championship in terms of the intensity of the championship you got that first senior debut tell us what's the level where you've been playing before and now um, it must be completely different. Yeah, even you get to play 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's different. Um, obviously, with um, with Newport, they're in League, they're in League Two. It's not even League One. It's like it's different. Championship is way quicker than than League Two. The, the intensity is quicker. The players are more fit. More more fit. They got they are more fit and stronger. You know what I'm saying. When you play in England, um, obviously there's some. Previously, Gambian players, the first Gambian to play in the Premier League, of course, is Modo Barrow, who used to play for Swansea City uh, in the Championship. Yes, I the know. The likes of Seifo Sully and some other players. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, Mustafa Carriol and, and, and yeah, yeah, I know all of them. Yeah. Um, when you look at them, do they give you a motivation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, um, I've been watching Modo Barrow, Mustafa Carriol. I trained with Mustafa Carriol once at Back to Action. That's a training camp in Bristol. I trained with him once, yeah. But yeah, um, they, they motivated me, can't even lie. What's your ambition? Uh, how is it going to be like? We've seen players who played even in League One, then they rose up to Championship and then to Premier League. They ended up you know, playing for Chelsea, they ended up playing for Manchester United and even other bigger teams in England. Yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my dream, but right now I'm, I'm focusing on my team, my team Bristol City to get, try to get, get them to the Premier League. If, if I could do that, that would be great. But yeah, if anything happens, then that's what meant to happen. It's really important for you to get team action, every player wants to play, but not all players can play at the same time. You're a young player, would you seize the opportunity if you're given the chance? Or for you, you have to be a little bit patient because um, this is your first experience. Obviously, there are some other players in the team the squad, who yeah. had more experience than you. Of course, of course. Obviously, I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming up as a young player. I got to learn from the older players. So I just got to be patient and then keep learning, keep working hard. Hopefully, the manager can see that and then put me in the team. You left the Gambia at a very young age. Um, do you still remember about the certain few things about Gambia? Yeah, yeah, actually I do. Um, yeah, I do. I do remember a lot of things. <laughs> Tell us about one thing that you remember. Uh, <laughs> I remember the foods. <laughs> yeah. Name one. Uh, Jollof, Benachin. Mm, Benachin. Uh, Domada. Domada. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you came from Gunjur. Um, in the southern part of Gambia, um, as the beach, the coastal area, there's some few players. Um, one of them is Buba Star Jane. He once played for the national team. He's somebody that is really very well known. And another Gunjur player is Bakari Jata, who plays for Hamburg in the German Bundesliga, and now second Bundesliga because they got relegated last season. Um, as somebody from Gunjur, I'm, I'm sure they must be watching. They must be very proud of you. So, what yeah. do you have to say to them? Yeah, they are. Bubba Stajan is actually my uncle. Him, him and my mom are from the same mom and dad. So, yeah, and Bakari Jata, 
when I was young, I seen him. I, I seen him train all the time. I, 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 I definitely, I did train with him once, like not, not no one, a couple of times. But yeah, they like they inspired me. Okay. I speak to my uncle all the time, so yeah, he give me good advice. So I keep keep working hard and keep focusing, and pacing, and then yeah. There are some footballers who would settle for second best. Like once you play in the English Championship, um, to you, the, the pay grade is good when you come to Gambia. Uh, as they would say in the street language, you can chill, you can build a house, you can drive a car, you can enjoy your, yourself by, by Gambian standard. Yeah. For you, is it going all the way there to the top as an ambition? Or is it, okay, I'm, I'm cool, I'm now playing the Championship, so that's all. No, for me, for me it's all the way. My, 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 like my dream is to play in the Champions League, so yeah, for me it's all the way to the top. Ah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that's chilling. Ambitious, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Champions chilling. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going for. Yeah, man, I gotta keep working hard. Like I don't play football because of the money. I play because I love it. Okay, but in the process, you have to go through a lot. Um, you had the experience of going on a long time injury, and in that injury. You must have learned a lot. The recovery process took a lot of time until when you get your senior debut. Uh, tell us about the experience of being injured as a footballer. Being injured as a footballer is <laughs> the worst times to be in. I can't be like, no footballer want to be injured. Like it can be like if you're not mentally strong, it can like can destroy you. It can like can finish your career. They can do lots of things to you. I can't even lie. But yeah, it's tough, kind of. And so many footballers at your age, some is just stop at the academy because uh, of football. You can have 100,000 people playing football. They all want to go pro. Or maybe, probably, just about 100 would go pro. And some uh, at the start of their career, when they just begin, others, because of injury, they, they're hard to suffer. Do you do football and education? Because that's what is most, mostly advised all over in the international world, especially England, America, and, and some of the first world countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I done, I done my school. Obviously, I start schooling in Gambia, and then went to UK and finished off my schooling, and then got scholarship at Bristol City. Obviously, if you got scholarship, you you do education and football. So yeah, I done, I done that for two years, and then got my pro contract. So yeah, I done my education up to up to college level. So, now yeah. let's talk about if there is an opportunity for you to play for any of the Gambian national team categories. Yes, of course, you were over the under-20s. Now you should either be maybe with the under-23, that is maybe the Olympic squad, and as well as the, the senior national team. If you get your first shot, how is it going to be like? I'll be, I'll be looking forward to it. I, I, can't, I can't wait. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it comes sooner than later. But yeah, I'll be looking forward to it. Thank you just on a final note. Say hi to your Gunjur people in Mandinka. Yeah, Abenyadi, my Gunjur people. Hmm. Say Kujana here from Gunjur Jana Kunda. Okay, Baraka Baka Seku. Ala Baraka Baka. Oh, thank you very much. And that's Seku Jane, Bristol City player. Bristol City is a team in the English Championship, just a level below the Premier League. So they're looking forward to promotion. Next season, they will be fighting again. The season hasn't been that great because of a a whole lot of issues, but we wish them all the best of luck. Thank you, Seiku. Thank you time. very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're Thank going to take another much. short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about athletics and judo. Welcome back and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is Q Sports and I'm Umudu Kajaga. Now let's talk about some athletics. In athletics, the Gambia signed at recent competitions in Dakar, Cameroon and Spain. And the Gambia captain of the athletics team, that is Adam Ajame, he has been very much optimistic in an interview that I had with him. After successfully taking part in the Rio Olympic Games four years ago, Adam Ajame is eyeing a qualification spot in the Tokyo Games in the 200 metres. He has been training at a high performance centre in Dakar for close to a year now. Although his last week competition timing of 20.48 seconds is short of the 20.24 standard timing for qualification and his personal best at 20.45 is also outside the qualifying time, he still hopes to make it through. I am not really, really worried because 
I know uh, by running with the people, I will I will get that quali qualification because the qualification is 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 twenty twenty five. So I I am not really really eager in for to running of running twenty twenty five. My intention is at least going below that. You know, at least I want to call myself uh, a West African athlete who 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 will 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 even ever do 19 in the 200 meters. Just qualifying will not be enough for Adam Ajame. He says he wants to leave a legacy in Gambian track athletics. In 2016, he broke the long-standing national 200 meters record of Jesu Masedin Dur. Athletics it comes with targetings and plans. So my plan is to leave something at least you know that will that will serve there so much so many years before it's broken because even with my 200 meters uh it was with i uh jesu said and then uh it will it have been there for about 10 years so i took it from him in 2016 that is 2025 yeah, 2045 rather so at least i am i still want to leave more on the on the track for the the coming generation Adamo spoke about how training with his compatriots, Sengan Job, Aliu Juv, and Ibrahim Kamara, has helped them build a strong team. We are here as a team. Uh, our main uh, objective is not only about individual events to qualify for the Olympic, but we also want to see our relay team there. Not only participation, it, I know it's going to be for the first time in the history of Gambia, but not only participation, we want to go there and to make sure that at least we be on the final top eight list in the world. Gina Bass is the only Gambian athlete who has secured automatic qualification to the Games after her 2019 success at the Africa Games in Morocco, where she won gold in the 200 metres. Now we take you to judo, the Africa Judo Championship, which was held in Dhaka, Senegal, just over a few days ago. It's Gambian Fainjai who have won the silver medal when he faced off against an Algerian in the final. For the second time in succession, Fine Jai has registered his name among the top judokas in Africa, competing in the 73-kilogram category at the African Judo Championship in Dakar. Not only did he win silver, thereby boosting his ranking in the continent, he secures the all-important qualification ticket to the Tokyo Games. This is how he reacted to the achievement. Yesterday was a very good day for me. I felt like I was very well prepared and very very first from the very first fight I felt like today is the day for me. And unfortunately the final wasn't like I wanted to be but still a silver medal is good for it was very important for the qualification. Jai, who was a bronze medal winner at the 2015 Africa Games in Brazzaville, won his silver medal in style, winning all the way to the final in several rounds before losing to Algerian Nuri Fati in an intense battle. This was the third silver medal for me, so I was really expecting this time to win the gold medal. But yeah, there will be another time for that. Despite his qualification, Fai says he wants to continue working hard to be in better shape with other competitions. He now joins sprinter Gina Bass as the second Gambian to have secured an Olympic Games qualification ticket. After two, three weeks, I will have another competition, actually World Championships in Budapest. And uh, this will work as the final competition and preparation for the Olympic Games. <clears throat> but after the World Championships, I will do another Olympic training camp as a preparation for Tokyo. And after that, I will just rest my mind and my body and uh, prepare myself for the biggest event. Judo may not get much of a mention in the Gambian sports media, but it is one of the few sports that has brought accolades such as medals at the continental stage and puts our country on the global sporting map. Perhaps Njai's latest achievement may be part of the process towards changing that. With that, we say thank you very much for watching this broadcast and have a pleasant night. Bye for now. Keep on sporting.